this is what I will show you how to make in this video. I was making this for one of my clients and it turned out pretty cool so I thought why not make a video about it. And about the video editing course I announced few months back on my social media. All I can say for that at the moment is that good things worth waiting for. Recently I'm not getting much time between life and client work. It will be out soon, it's still in the works and it will be totally worth your time. For those who ask me where do I get the assets for my videos, I don't use any assets in specific and where to find them is also a hassle for many people. So you just have to look for anything you want on Google or Bing and you will find what you're looking for. You just have to know what you're looking for. So as you can see I have the same Google as everyone has. Basically just know what you're looking for, what you want to find and you will find something. If not the exact thing, you will find something close to it. Alright now let's launch After Effects. So as usual I will start by adding a new comp and give it a name. It's going to be 1920 by 1080 wide and for the FPS since I don't have any spokesperson video so I will go to either with 16 or 12 FPS. And by the way I have typed out some effects I used in the actual video. You can see on the sticky note at the bottom of this video. The assets I used will be available in the video so you can follow with me and the full file will be available on my store. Okay, let's type another text and make it a bit big like this and let's replace the font. And turn on the outlines instead of the fill. And now for this text, I want to give it a blinking effect. So let's open the text like this and then go under the animate options and here I will pick opacity. And let's delete this. Now from this section, you have to select wiggly option. And inside this wiggly option, you don't have to do anything special. You can just copy what I'm doing. It's pretty much the default. Just add some keys to the opacity and then go forward a bit and make it 100%. So when you play it, it should look like this. And now I'm going to add a rounded rectangle. And you can turn down its soft edges like this. Then let's make it black. and no outlines. Okay, now is the time for the sponsor of this video, Uniconverter by Wondershare. This is an amazing tool that you can have, especially if you're working in the video editing side. And sometimes you have to send files to the client to have some feedback. While it is easy to convert big files into small files using any online tool, it's also kind of a pain to upload, wait, and then download them. While in Uniconverter, you can just do it without uploading. And it's not only limited to turning down the size of a file, it has way too many options that you can pick that will help you and save you the time of uploading and downloading. So be sure to check it out and I'm sure you're going to love it. And now let's add a solid and I'm gonna call it BG and put it below every other element. And just in case I will scale it up to 150% just because if I have to scale things up so it doesn't get cut off. And we can't see the additional objects because everything being black, it's hard to see. So let's turn on this option so we can see the empty section like this. And then go to composition settings and pick a different shade so we can see with the black shading. And now attach the text to the shape and put the big text below everything. And now let's add a camera to our composition. Keep the settings at default, one node and hit OK and convert the layers to 3D objects. I'm gonna go inside the camera option and turn off the depth of field because I don't want to mess with it at the moment. And then let's add a null object and convert it to a 3D object as well. Attach your camera to the null object. 
open position using P and add a key then move it forward like this and then tweak the value so it starts to zoom in and then add another key to make it a bit zoomed in and lastly another key at the end to keep it zooming in and I think the depth in this scene is not too deep so I will just send this big text back in Z space away from us and if you switch to the custom view you can see how back it's gonna be once you are done with this you can head back to the active view and scale it up now as you can see it has more depth and after that I will simply put a film overlay that I found on the internet it's nothing too complex it's just to get into the field because I'm not feeling what I'm doing right now. You can take this as an idea to not get an art block. And let's cut everything so we have a clean timeline. And after that simply duplicate the text like this. And put it after the cut. And I won't do anything to it except for typing something else. And to get that social media kind of text effect, you can simply select the text, for example, a word, and turn down the size like I'm doing. This effect has been going on on social media quite a lot. And let's move it further in Z space towards us. And I will give it a slight tilt. Maybe scale it down a tiny bit. And let's move it towards Z space. So this is how it looks. And now let's put the image I want to use on the timeline. As you can see since this is not a PNG file so I will have to mask it out myself. Okay now let's convert this to a 3D object as well. Not exactly a 3D object. But anyways, I think it's quite big, so let's turn it down. Looks pretty good. And now duplicate the text. And I will just type out some calculations and pick a good font that matches with the calculation theme. Okay, now let's copy the transform options from the, from the image and paste them on the text but actually let's deattach the text from the shape and now paste the values if it still doesn't get at the top perfectly unfortunately you have to do it manually and basically you just have to put it above the display panel and now put a tint effect to the image and pick a dark shade And let's mask out this part as well so we don't have anything messing with the actual text. So for this I'm gonna add a mask to this and then add a fill effect and pick mask number 2. Actually I will mask out the whole display panel instead of that one tiny section. And let's pick a dark shade. Let's add some soft edges to it using the fill options. Okay, this is what we have so far. And then I will put the image I found on Google like this and then put a tint effect to it. So it should look like this. and then convert it to a 3D object as well. Let's tilt it and basically you just have to have fun with the theme and whatever works best with you. Just not make it too complicated so it gets in the way of the main text. The main focus should be the text and not anything else. All the other elements are just to make it a little bit fancy.
there's so many cool things you can add for example i put a discord chat over here just have fun with what you're doing as you can see on its own it doesn't look too good of course so you have to tweak it a tiny bit we'll start by the levels effect just to make it a bit dark and then put a tint effect And that's pretty much what you have to do with it. And finally after converting it into a 3D object, let's send it back in Z space. And then scale it up and give it a slight tilt. And then duplicate it and put it above to give that close up holographic effect and move it further in C space, further close to, like towards us. And also you don't have to do the exact things that I'm doing here. It's just to give you an idea of what could be done and how you can put and how you can utilize the objects to make something unique. Okay, now I should turn on depth of field. Depth of field can honestly be time taking. So you're not gonna get the perfect setup with this. You just have to mess with the values a lot. Okay, after that, I want to add another image to the scene, put it back in the z-axis, like this. And now comes the most anticipated section of the edit, is the post-processing. So add an adjustment and I'm going to call it Optics Compensation. And put an Optics Compensation effect to it. And now add an another adjustment and call it shake. And then put a dissolve shake effect to it. You can use any shake effect you have. Simply add some keys for the percentage like this. And then head in the settings of X shake and Y shake. And I just want the shake on Y axis, not on the X axis. So I will pull up the Y axis and pull down the X axis. X axis is the horizontal shake and Y axis is the vertical shake. Since we already had added a key, you can go in the middle and change the value. So it will add a new key. And you can head a little bit forward like this and set it back to 0%. And then adjust the key curve like this. So the shake starts to fade out as soon as it hits. So when you play back, this is how it should look. And I will add some keys to the camera as well, just to keep the movement going. I think I should tell this because a lot of people complain about this that the playback is not smooth even without the effects. That is because you're working with 3D objects instead of 2D objects. When you work with a software like After Effects, the playback is never gonna be smooth. Even if you're using a computer from NASA, it's not gonna be smooth at all because it calculates every single second. It takes a while for you to calculate such complex animation. Okay, now after that, I will add another adjustment and call it film damage and then put a film damage effect to it as well. And I will use this preset and just turn off the last option. Okay, then after that, another adjustment, put a deep glow effect to it. And I know a lot of beginner editors use deep glow effect way too much. The point of using deep glow is to blend everything, not to make everything super illuminating. So when you apply a deep glow effect, you have to keep it subtle so it doesn't mess with the look. And I will even turn down the opacity of the adjustment because it's way too intense to begin with. And then add another adjustment and then put a CC vignette effect to it. Another adjustment and I will call it defocus edge and it's not a plugin you just have to put a Gaussian blur effect to it. And make it like 30 to 40% or anything that fits you. 
and make a mask in the middle like this and then invert that mask so it affects only the edges not the middle section and add some feather to it to make it soft like this it gives a defocused edge effect which makes the viewer look exactly in the middle and then lastly I'm going to add a chromatic aberration effect it's just an optional effect you don't have to add it if you don't want to it gives that lens split effect Okay then, let's put the dust overlay that we found on Google at the beginning of this video. Veneer effect seems a bit too much, so let's turn it down. And I think you don't even need deep glow effect for this. In the actual video, I didn't use the deep glow effect at all. So anyway, let's use in this one and see if this makes a difference. So I think I will enable the tint option inside deep glow effect and see if it makes it look something unique. Okay now it's time for the main effect, the optical flare effect by video copilot. So for this effect you just have to copy what I'm doing is nothing too special to have an explanation for. Once you have picked your light you can hit OK. And instead of using the built in tint effect inside of optical flare I'm going to use the good old tint effect that we always use. After that you can simply place the light over to your text or even to the side and using the center position option you can spread it out. To give it a blinking effect you can do it inside of optical flares like this. Kinda looks cool with blinking. And also don't forget to change the color of the big text. And after that we can put a deep glue effect to it individually to make it blue. And the color right now looks a little bit too, it has no contrast to it. So I will add another adjustment and put a curves effect to it and make an S curve to it. Just a tiny bit, not too much. Something like this. It looks a lot more focused now. And one additional thing you can do is to add some keys to the center position of optical flare. It's just an optional thing, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but it gives a little bit movement to the image. Okay now I will add a new solid because this scene looks a little too dark. Pick a shade that matches with your theme, something like that. Then mask it out. And just adjust the mask like so then go inside the mask option and you can add some feather to it or if you want to expand it you can expand it and if you want to contract it you can contract it and I think the first scene looks a little too dark as well so let's just put this solid behind everything and so nothing is too dark and hard to see all right so that is pretty much it for this video and i hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and about the course i will keep updating on my insta and my website so keep an eye for that it will totally worth the wait and the time i will put it out as soon as i can and i'm thankful to all of you who watch my videos and anticipating for the course i never imagined when i first announced it that so many people will be looking forward to it i will be back with another video and until then, peace out.